Hello students, welcome back. Myself Pushpendra Singh and we are going to start with our current affairs class. So today you have 24th of March 2021. All right, and uh, we are going to start with our current affairs. So these lectures are basically uh, meant for those students who are preparing for the civil services examination as well as other government competitive examinations because you require to answer the few questions related to the current affairs. For that, you must also study the national newspaper that is the Hindu, which is the most preferable one, or you can read Indian Express also. Both of these newspapers are equally good. You can refer any of these newspapers, right? As, as well as you must also refer the current affairs magazine, okay? Uh, you can subscribe your preparation or you can supplement your preparation with the help of these lectures. So you can subscribe these lectures based on the current affairs on the YouTube where you will get the future IAS and you can subscribe our channel and you will get the daily current affairs related news. All right. So let's begin with the lecture. Okay. Okay. So first is basically the permanent Indus Commission. Okay. As you know about the Indus River. Okay. The Indus River basically you know, is the major river which flows from the Himalayan region. And the Indus has the five tributaries, okay? So that is, you know, uh, that is basically your tributaries of Indus are basically, you know, Chenav, Jhelum, okay? Then Satluj, then Bees and Ravi. These are the five rivers which are basically also called the tributaries of your Indus River, Indus and its tributaries, okay? As you know about the Indus Water Treaty, right? The Indus Water Treaty was basically, you know, it was signed in September 19, September 19, 1960, okay? It was signed between India and the Pakistan, okay? And it was signed in presence of the representatives of the World Bank, okay? The main uh, intention of signing this permanent, uh, you know, this treaty was basically, you know, to resolve the outstanding issues related to the water sharing between the Indus and its tributaries. Okay. So that basically distribution of the water between Indus and the tributaries or of the Indus and tributaries between India and the Pakistan is basically governed by this Indus water treaty. Okay. And under that uh, institutional mechanism called the Indus Commission was basically set up. Okay. Now, a permanent Indus Commission was basically set up. So, after a gap of two and a half years, that means the last time the Indus Commission was met in 2018. Now, after the gap of two and a half years, the Indian and Pakistani delegation, okay, related to the permanent Indus Commission is basically going to meet on the 116th meeting of the Indus Water Commission. Okay. So regarding the permanent Indus Commission, it is in bilateral commission. That means the representatives from India and the Pakistan, both are involved in the consultation process as well as in the various negotiation process. Okay. And it was created to implement and manage the goals and the objectives related to the Indus Water Treaty. Okay. As I told you that basically signed between India and the Pakistan on September 19, 1960. Okay. Uh, with the help of the World Bank, you know, officials or World Bank representatives. It is basically, you know, a treaty which basically resolved the dispute related to Indus and its tributaries. Okay. The last meeting, be last meeting between India and Pakistan representatives related to the Indus Water uh, Commission was held basically on August 29, 2018. And this meeting, which is the 116th meeting, would be held after the gap of two and a half years. Okay, and now the meeting which was coincided with the National Day of Pakistan, right? So that day, you know, uh, it is a viewed. So this 116th meeting is viewed as a part of, you know, the process which was started by the government of Pakistan, right? As a part of, or as a process of normalization of bilateral ties between the India and the Pakistan. So on that occasion of the National Day of Pakistan, okay, the the process 
to kick start the normalization of the ties between india and pakistan was started okay and that was the two day meeting okay of the commission that was bilateral commission being held on the indian side by indian by indus water commissioner from indian side was pradeep kumar saxena and from the pakistani side which is the delegation which is led by the pakistani commissioner for indus water that was sayed mohammad meher ali shah okay so the delegation met and uh, negotiated on different you know issues okay so you can see here the rivers the indus and its tributaries so jhelum chenab ravi bias satluj right now now what is this indus water treaty is all about so first of all you must understand these treaties or indus water treaty is basically having the arrangement of sharing of the water between india and the pakistan okay so that was happened so you have the three western river okay you have the three western rivers the three western river is basically known as indus jhelum and chena that is indus okay that is flowing in this way then jhelum and then chena these are the three western river i am talking about these three western rivers now these three western rivers right they went to the pakistan so the water belongs to the pakistan okay now the three eastern river that is satluj bis and ravi these three eastern rivers basically goes to satluj okay then ravi and bis these eastern river goes to india okay now further it has been made an arrangement in the indus water treaty <coughs> sorry that the india is or india is allowed to use the 20% of the water so that means india can use the 20% of the water okay which is of the western river that is indus jhelum and chenab okay and india is granted or indus water treaty basically granted the 3.6 million acre feet of the permissible storage capacity to india on the western river that is the indus jhelum and jhelum and chenab right so india can store the 3.6 million acre feet of the water right on the western river right uh, for any type of developmental projects so because of this sharing all sort of a you know some negotiations or some you know disputes happened between india and pakistan so indus water treaty basically the indus jhelum and chenab is basically goes to the pakistan india can use the 20% of the water that is around 3.6 million acre feet of the permissible water that india can use and the exclusive rights goes to the india that is <coughs> satluj ravi and bees the india can use the water belongs to these three eastern rivers all right then sixth schedule as you know the sixth schedule basically govern the areas right which are having you know the tribal population okay so sixth schedule area is basically related to your tribal population okay now why we have the separate fifth schedule and the sixth schedule okay in your constitution as you know you have the provision for the protection of right or the safeguarding of right the autonomy of the tribal people right you know or their culture their important aspects related to their lifestyle right so for that purpose right we have set up a separate mechanism for the protection and the conservation of their unique you know the sense of the living style so through that fifth and sixth schedule we basically protect their population right we protect their autonomy right we protect their unique cultural aspects right so the union home ministry basically informed the lok sabha that there is no proposal to implement the panchayat system in the six schedule areas now you must be aware about the fact that the panchayati raj system that is instituted through the 73rd constitutional amendment act that is you have set up the three tier system okay that is at the rural level that is right at basically block level that is at intermediate and at a district level so you have set up the three panchayat or three tier panchayatira system okay now 
there is a separate provision to govern the sixth schedule area that is different from your basically this 73rd constitutional amendment act okay now the sixth schedule basically deals with the tribal population which is residing in this uh, six schedule areas or which have been demarcated as a six schedule areas so for governing of the six schedule area there is a separate set of mechanism i told you that the 73rd constitution amendment act do not apply to the six schedule areas okay for that we have set up the autonomous developmental councils these autonomous developmental council have given the power to frame the law on the land public health agriculture and other items which are there in the six schedule or the tribal populated areas okay so first of all you must understand the sixth schedule the sixth schedule areas currently lies in the four states okay these four states are assam meghalaya mizoram and tripura okay now not entire assam not entire meghalaya mizoram or tripura is designed as a schedule area but certain pockets are designed as a schedule area so in the four states there are 10 autonomous councils which are existed in assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram so you can say that in the assam right these autonomous councils are called the north kachar hills kirby anglong district and bodoland territorial area these three autonomous councils are existed in the assam state then in the meghalaya there are three such autonomous councils which are known as you know khasi hills jaintia hills and garo hills they are all located in the meghalaya then in tripura there are, there is only one area that is the tribal area in the tripura okay in the mizoram there is you know the chakma mara and the lai districts are basically also declared as a, the autonomous area that has been governed with the help of autonomous councils in those six scheduled areas okay next the hyderabad sisters okay now these hyderabad sisters are basically known for right their recognition or their contribution towards the classical music okay so these hyderabad sisters are basically the two ladies who were contributing towards you know uh, your you know towards your the music or classical music one of this sister called lalita died out of cardiac arrest and she was 70 years old okay the two sisters known as the lalita and second is hari priya so both are the sisters which are basically having the greater greatest contribution to the classical music you know in india and uh, they are having you know you know full concert or full audiences in their concert okay they are known for the mano dharma that is you know the separate set of ragas and which are sticking to the pure traditional style right and these ragas are represented as a rare ragas as well as the kirtis both sisters have performed right various concerts at the leading sabhas of the country as well as in the abroad also so these are the two sister the hari priya and the lalita the lalita was died due to the cardiac arrest at the age of 70 years old okay next the freedom pineapple campaign okay so that is between china and taiwan okay now what is this freedom pineapple campaign this freedom pineapple campaign was started by taiwan okay i will tell you a brief background so what is happening is the taiwan basically export the pineapples to the china recently the china has put the restrictions on the import on the on the import of these pineapples from the taiwan so that means the china has banned the pineapple export from taiwan to china right by saying that this pineapple consisting of a harmful creature that is bacteria or some virus that may affect the chinese population okay now the taiwan is infuriated because of this move of the china and and taiwan think that this move of restricting the taiwanese pineapple to the china is basically a move to pressurize the taiwan because china considered the taiwan as the integral part of china okay so the ties between china and the taiwan have gone the historic low right because of you know uh, because of this pineapple issue 
due to you know different issues are also there for example sovereignty foreign relations and military building up between the two is also at the rock bottom okay the background is china banned the import of pineapples from the chai from the taiwan the china think that it consists of or it has the harmful creature that basically impact the chinese agriculture but the but the taiwan basically refuted the china's claim and held that the imported pineapples right has nothing to do with the you know some sort of a harmful germ or bacteria virus right right it is just a move to increase the popul the political pressure on the taiwan because the china considered the taiwan its own provinces so that was the forceful occupation on the taiwan that was done by the china okay now the chinese president tai ing wen basically kicked off this campaign that is called as pineapple pineapple challenge right on the social media to attract more and more buyers of the of the taiwanese you know these pineapples around the world and that was the challenge or that was basically a, a challenge on the social media to counter this chinese move or chinese ban on the taiwanese pineapples okay and the taiwanese foreign minister also urged the like minded friends all around the globe right to withstand or to stand with the taiwan to resist the pressure that has been mounted by the china on the taiwan and to you know uh, to basically you know buy this the taiwanese pineapples and they also behind the freedom pineapple campaign that was kick started on the social media by the taiwan okay so you can see here the taiwan is basically an island so uh, you can see it is basically to the western side you have the south china sea to the right side you have the ryukyu island which is been also disputed but it is now controlled by the by the japan okay or to the eastern side you have the philippine sea okay and to the west side you have the china okay next the parosmia what is this parosmia so parosmia is basically a condition or is a medical condition first of all okay it is a medical condition which is been uh, which is been faced by the patients which are recovering from the covid 19 or corona 19 related you know pandemic so what happens is the people basically loses the sense of order right so they loses the sense of order that means they loses the smell or the distortion related to the sense of smell occur in this medical condition so if they are smelling something that is not the right smell that means there is some distortion okay there is some distortion so they lose their their sense of smell so that condition is known as prosmia that condition is known as prosmia so what is happening is that due to the corona virus right now what happens is the distortion in the sense of smell occur and the person who are having this prosmia can detect certain orders or cannot detect certain orders or the person may detect you know the order which is exactly not the the real order or he may experience the unpleasant order right for example an example is given here the coffee the coffee flavor may be smell like a burnt toast if the person is you know infected with the prosmia prosmia right and prosmia is a basically temporary condition no need to worry it is not harmful but it is just an you know uh, the result of the covid 19 related virus okay now the causes related to this prosmia is basically you know the people who are recovering right or people who are infected because of this corona virus you know is basically loses their sense of smell okay now following this loss you know they may recover over the time over the period of the time right some of the common triggers of the prosmia is basically included the roasted or toasted food or coffee onions chocolate garlic and the eggs if you smell them you can have the triggering sensation that you are smelling something different okay so that may tell you that you have prosmia or not okay the prosmia itself manifest due to the damage which is caused to this old factory neurons which is been found right as a complex and the delicate structure in the nose and this old factory neurons is been attacked by the virus that is corona virus and that is the cause of your prosmia which is an medical disorder of 
the the losing of the sense of smell in the person okay next the next is the pranit what is pranit see pranit is basically the e tendering portal it is known as the e tendering portal now you must understand what is tendering so tendering is the process in which you know a person or in which an employer or a client you can say in which a client basically you know invite the expression of bid right invite the expression of bid okay to basically different stakeholders and the person or the different agencies or organizations who have given the lowest bidder or who was the lowest bidder would be ultimately selected okay and that will be given the responsibility of you know uh, you know uh, different type of work under this bid okay so the power grid corporation of india which is an psu under central government it is an psu under ministry of power has established this portal which is e tendering portal that is pranit okay now obviously this e tendering work would definitely you know reduces the workload or reduces the the uh, you know uh, the paperwork obviously so it will lead to the less paperwork it will ease the operation because everything on the portal everything online okay and it will make the tendering process more transparent because it will reduce any chances of corruption okay and it has been certified by the standardization testing and quality certificate certification directorate under ministry of electronics and information technology government of india okay now the power grid which is an psu under central government under ministry of power is now only the organization in india that have the e procurement solution under this pranit on sap supply relationship management complying with all requirement related to the security and the transparency as stipulated by this stqc that is your basically the standardization testing quality certification directorate okay so you can see here the high you know power tension cables which is been line and which is been you know uh, done by the power grid corporation of india okay next the national health mission okay as you know the national health mission is the government of india's you know project okay it is an basically program which has been implemented by the government of india okay the union cabinet has appraised the progress which have been made under national health mission during the financial year 2019 and 20 okay now the cabinet basically you know noted that this national health mission has emphasized right the new initiatives in 2019 and 2020 okay so that initiatives we have to learn which was started okay so first is basically the sans which is known as the social awareness and the actions to neutralize pneumonia successfully okay so this was basically an initiative that was launched under the national health mission ultimate aim is to reduce the death which was due to the pneumonia or which was due to the pneumonia which occurred in the children so ultimately eliminating the deaths due to the childhood pneumonia that was under the social awareness and the actions to neutralize the pneumonia that was related to you know to uh, accelerate or to aware the people and to take action related to this next the surakshit matritva aswashan that is called suman now you must understand this was this was basically you know all existing schemes which is related to the neonatal or maternal health that means the mother and the neonatal babies both are included under this one umbrella that is the surakshit matritva aswashan so their health related parameters are brought under this umbrella scheme now this is a initiative under the national health mission to provide the assured dignified and the respectful quality healthcare to the maternal as well as to the neonatal without any cost right and zero tolerance to the denial of services that was basically applicable next the midwifery services initiative now as you know that midwife okay so now 
the idea of the midwifery service initiative under the national health mission to ultimately to create a cadre of nurse which is the cadre of nurse practitioner in the midwifery right who have the dedicated skills and who can dedicate their services in accordance with the you know the the norms which are prescribed by the international confederation of midwives and such the midwives should be knowledgeable should have enough skills capability to provide right the compassionate women centered reproductive and maternal new healthcare services to the mothers right or to the pregnant mothers next the school health and the wellness ambassadors initiative now you must understand you have health and wellness center right so this health and the wellness centers under this avhwc program okay the wellness ambassadors were basically appointed okay so that was appointed with a partnership with the ministry of education to promote the health and the well being through an active lifestyle among the school children so right so among the school children these ambassadors would provide right all sort of uh, you know education or awareness to the school children next the word tuberculosis day so as you know the tuberculosis which is also known as tb is is you know uh, is a major disease specifically in the developed and under developed countries right india is also you know uh, you know uh, affected because of the tuberculosis or tb so world tuberculosis day is been observed every year on 24th of march 2021 so this year the world tuberculosis day is observed on 24th of march the ultimate idea is to raise awareness about the tb okay so this is the day which is an international day or world tuberculosis day on 24th of march okay and it was 1882 that dr robert koch who announced that he has discovered a bacteria which have caused this tuberculosis and after discovery of the dr robert koch right you know uh, you know the the paving of the way for the diagnosis and the cure of the tuberculosis bacteria was basically kick started the theme for the world tb day was the clock is ticking conveys the sense that the world is running out of time to act on the timely actions on the commitment related to the tuberculosis which is been made by the global leaders so the theme basically you know remind the world leaders that we don't have time or we are running out of time to act timely on you know the sense of responsibility or the commitment we have as a global leaders to eliminate the tb from the world and india also committed to end the tuberculosis by 2025 that is the five years ahead of the global target and this tuberculosis is a treatable disease right the person can be treated easily okay so it is the you know the theme that is word is taking word tuberculosis day 2021 it is celebrated on 24th of march every year okay next ugors so first of all you must understand to north western province which is also known as you know the xinjiang province okay this xinjiang province is basically the china's autonomous region now in the xinjiang province the minority muslims which are also known as uyghurs basically live now what is happening is that these muslim minorities which lives in the xinjiang provinces okay the china considered them right as you know as the illegal occupants of the xinjiang provinces and china also considered that they cause the violence and, and uh, you know uh, the problems in the xinjiang provinces so what is happening is that china has started you know uh, changing its own policies regarding the xinjiang provinces and started right the changing demography in the xinjiang provinces and inflicted lot of human rights violations on the uyghurs specifically the muslim population now this is the first time that all western powers that is european union that is consisting of the 27 countries us united states of america britain and canada all have imposed a sanction on the chinese officials and the entities who were behind those human rights atrocities on the uyghurs which are specifically the muslim minorities which lives in the xinjiang provinces of china okay so under the sanctions 
right which has been imposed by european union uk canada and usa right uh, this sanction inco- include the travel bans on those officials entities as well as the freezing of those assets which are lying okay already the european union has imposed the sanctions on the china right and this was the arm embargo which was there after 1989 after the tanian square crackdown that was done by the china and that embargo was still you know that on the china okay and this sanction or this sanctions are not very damaging but that is how you can say that that is the hardening the stand of the european union as well as the combined western power right that have moved together right to its largest trading partner that is the china okay the china you know retaliated that the sanctions right, right has nothing to do the china consistently denied that the reports related to the atrocities against the uyghurs or the minority muslims are basically to de-radicalizing those you know elements of this population which are basically causing the violence in the country and that is in the interest of the security of the mainland china as well as to the world okay so you can see here in the northwest portion you have the xinjiang provinces which is belong to china and here the minority muslim is basically you know causing the trouble to the population okay next the unhrc boat on sri lanka so that is united nations human right council okay so the united nations human right council which is in which is located in the geneva right it has been voted on the you know on the boat on sri lanka because the sri lanka has some of the record which is been related to the human rights violations on the ltte that is liberation of tigers of tamil that is the tamilian population which resides in the island country that is the sri lanka these ltt has the support from you know uh, the elite support from the government of india as well as from the government of tamil nadu as it at is elite by the china elite by the sri lanka and uh, the tamils basically have you know try to frame uh, you know some sort of autonomy within the sri lanka right and there was so much violence between the sri lankan forces as well as between the ltt forces okay which which are alleged by the sri lanka that ltt are backed by the government of india as well as government of tamil nadu but that is not true okay obviously uh, the ltt that is basically tamil origin the basically the liberation tiger of tamil basically they have the tamil ethnicity so they are basically linkages with the tamil nadu right so india abstained on the crucial vote on sri lanka's you know the right record which is been uh, held at the united nations human right council in geneva okay the resolution on the promoting of reconciliation accountability and the human rights in the sri lanka was however adopted after 27 states in the 47 member council voted in the favor okay the sri lanka basically earlier told that it is politically motivated okay and sri lanka was quick to reject this un move to collect right you know which was related to collecting and you know preserving this evidence related to war crimes which was committed by the sri lankan armed forces against the ltte okay and you know the sri lankan resolution was first to be voted on uh you know uh, you know the the e voting procedure that was established for the unhrc 46th session and that was held virtually so it was the e voting process which have taken this resolution to be forwarded and india has abstained to be abstained on the voting of this resolution okay so you can see the sri lanka which is an island country the gulf of manar basically separates between india and sri lanka okay it is located in indian ocean region okay so that's all for today thank you very much we will meet tomorrow for our next session thank you very much